My old friend Michael Snyder from the Economic Collapse blog recently asked a very important question. What is the United States going to look like if everything happening right now continues? Hi, I'm Andrew Henderson. This is Nomad Capitalist. We're the channel and the company that helps seven and eight figure entrepreneurs and investors legally go where you're treated best from lower taxes to more personal freedom to having a plan B in these crazy times. I came across an article from Michael Snyder on Zero Hedge. And the title is, what is America going to look like if this continues? And what he says this is may surprise you a little bit, but I found this very interesting. I know Michael from back in the day. And the article goes like this. You can't have a civilization without civility. We may possess technology that is more advanced than any previous generation of Americans have had. But when it comes to how we treat one another and how we conduct ourselves, we are the worst generation in US history by a very wide margin. We have truly become a Hollywood culture, and I don't mean that in a good way. The average American spends 238 minutes a day watching television, and it's inevitable that putting so much garbage into our minds is going to result in garbage coming out. Most Americans learn how to express themselves by emulating what they see on their screens, and so now we have tens of millions of extremely crude people running all over the place. Sounds kind of like that uh, time I went to Tulum, Mexico, and saw the guy, uh, the grown man with the soiled white men's briefs running around town at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. But uh, this is very interesting, what Michael's talking about, because, um, uh, you know, everyone's talking about the lack of freedoms, taxes going up in countries like the United States, what we call the legacy brands. But one of the things, what I call the soft issues, you know, taxes going up, that's easily quantifiable. That's a hard issue. But one of the soft issues that people have been coming to us in droves over the last couple of years is they're saying, I don't recognize my country anymore. The country, I don't get along with my neighbors. I don't feel like I belong. I don't feel like we have shared values. People are at each other's throats. More people have told me, I never thought I would be calling Nomad Capitalist five years ago. I never thought I would come to this. And yet, you can't have civilization without stability. You know, what if the US continues down this road? It's a very interesting question. If you spend any time in public at all, Michael continues, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Most Americans dress like slobs. Act like pigs and endlessly spew profanity wherever they go. When people ask me why I left the U.S., by the way, I mean, this is not the, the, the main factor. But I remember on multiple occasions, like, grown women coming up to me in the street or at Trader Joe's and like, what do you want like a scarf for? Or like, I would go, my friends would drag me to bars uh, a couple times and like, girls would be like, what do you want these cufflinks for? Like, ah, yeah, yeah. like, you know, the freedom of expression is, is rather limited in the US. And uh, if you're a bit of a throwback, if you were born 80 years old, as I was, it's, uh, it's harder to do. Uh, this is something he says Mark H. Creech discussed in an article that he published this week. Well, at the grocery store this week, a woman was ahead of me in the checkout line using the word mother ever. <laughs> to the left of me in another line was a different woman on her phone. I could overhear her saying to someone, F this and F that. And I felt I was drowning in a cesspool of profanity. And he goes on and on and on about how just people just don't want to stop using profanity. Sadly, it's gotten to a point where even our national leaders are not afraid to use profanity. Earlier this week, it was reported that Kamala Harris used profanity while engaged in a heated discussion about the crisis in Afghanistan. Profane language that Joe Biden once used about Afghanistan received renewed attention this week because of the drama unfolding in Kabul. Of course, foul language is not limited to just one side of the aisle. And of course, he doesn't mention the fact that uh, you had a president before Joe Biden who uh, engaged in profanity frequently. I'm not sure why that's not mentioned, but um, uh, all right. Our leaders like to consider themselves the pinnacle of civilization. Yes, they do. The US is a legacy brand country that thinks that it's the best of the best just because it was at one time perhaps the best or only option. And they've criticized the Taliban for tearing down historical statues and forcing women uh, to wear masks. But over the past year, far more statues have been por- uh, turned down inside the United States than the Taliban ever dreamed of tearing down. And at this point, we are forcing everyone to wear masks. Critics say that the Taliban does not af- allow for freedom of speech. But when Taliban officials were asked about this, they simply pointed out that Facebook is even worse when it comes to freedom of speech. And they are right, he says. Critics say that the Taliban treat women horribly, and that's certainly true. But our women are uh, treated shamefully, too. Here's one example. A creep 
groped a woman in Brooklyn on the street this week and then pummeled her when she tried to fight back. Disturbing new video shows. The 26-year-old woman was walking at the corner of a street in Williamsburg around 2 in the morning on Saturday when a stranger approached from behind, grabbed her buttocks, video released by the cops early shows. When the woman attempted to slap the suspect, he socked her the, space, the face multiple times and essentially nothing was done to the guy. They didn't get the guy. Another example, a woman and her boyfriend were on their way to the Chicago Transit Authority Red Line on State Street and Jackson Boulevard in Chicago. They were waiting for the elevator. They never made it. They were viciously assaulted by a large gang of teens, and the woman was pummeled so badly she actually needs plastic surgery. Bones were broken. She's still bleeding inside. Murder rates were all over the, up all over the country last year, and they are way up all over the country again this year. This is after you saw multi-decade declines. Now we have become a brutal, violent, blood-soaked country. That's because we have a brutal, violent, blood-soaked culture. At one time, the U.S. could lecture the rest of the world about morality because we lived in a civilized society. But now we have lost whatever moral high ground we once possessed. And at this point, we need the rest of the world to lecture us. What is going to happen as this thin veneer of civilization that we all take for granted on a daily basis continues to steadily disappear? I am deeply, deeply concerned about our future, and that is a theme that I explored in his new book, The Seven-Year Apocalypse. We're in a highly advanced state of social decay, and it's getting worse with each passing year. I've heard so much criticism of the Taliban's culture, and many of those are right on target, but our culture is detestable, too. Now, uh, I don't necessarily imagine I would agree with Michael on every single thing here, uh, but this is a continuing example of how, you know, for decades, centuries sometimes even, name brands, whether they are brands themselves or whether they are countries, can maintain the image of civilization. We've talked about this with what's happening in Australia. How long can Australia continue claiming it's a free country, claiming it's a liberal democracy, while telling people they have to ask permission to leave or go to the grocery store or practically to go to the toilet? How long do you get to keep saying that you are uh, a democracy, that you are open, that you're free, or that you are civilized? Um, listen, you know, everyone has their own different factors for what makes a culture acceptable, uh, what makes a culture right, or it sounds like what Michael's saying is moral. Uh, and you may or may not disagree with all those things. I may or may not disagree with him on everything. Uh, but what I have heard from people is the United States other Western countries are going downhill. People have, especially during the pandemic, seen an increase in violence, an increase in homelessness. Now, the politicians will tell you these policies are because you've gotten wealthier. Uh, but the reality is these policies are because with all the tax dollars, with all the great wealth that these countries have, they have failed to solve basic societal problems. And they have also failed to educate people so where, to where they know how to get ahead. They know how to take advantage of what's the much ballyhooed American dream. Uh, and they know how to act properly. When you go places in the world, people can tell who the Americans are. And so when people say, you know, why did you uh, renounce your citizenship? Again, not the, not the main reason, but, you know, it's, it's nice now to go and to present an immigration, a passport that does not say the United States of America and to be lumped in with that group. Now, certainly there are some countries where you go and the accent is, uh, is pretty easily discernible. Uh, not as many countries as you would think, actually. But... Uh, the United States uh, is uh, much less, I mean, talk about the crime, it's going up. You look at the civil unrest, it is going up. You look at the fact that people are each, at each other's throats, that is going up. There is, uh, I don't want to say the conditions of a civil war brewing, I know some people would say that, but you are seeing great uh, fractures in the culture in the United States. And I have not been there in years. I was there for a week in 2017. And before that, I hadn't been there since the very beginning of 2014, uh, right after I left and we came back for our first conference. But, and what I'm told is it's gotten far worse. Uh, you're welcome to leave a comment on that below. What's, what, what you're seeing here is the breakdown of a society. Um, and it was, there are some you know, conservative political positions that would say it's breaking down that I may not agree with as someone who's lived outside of the United States who maybe has uh, you know, some more moderate positions on some of these issues. But you cannot disagree. Crime, civil unrest, people fighting. This is going up. Is that the kind of society that you want to live in? Now, people say, I'm going to stay and fix it. You have a country of over 300 million people. You have all these different camps. You have violence. You have less education. People are, uh, as he says, I mean, they follow what they see in Hollywood. They act like slob. 
How are you going to fix that? I mean, when you look at the culture in countries that I spend time in around the world, you say, oh, well, you, know, you can improve this, you can improve this. People always say it'll take a generation to improve you know, the last fragments before you know, people, the, the whole society is better. This, it, at least in the places that I'm going to, in many cases, the country is going in the right direction. The U.S. and Western countries, and the U.S. in particular in this case, are going the wrong direction. So you have to reverse the course somehow, which for a country of such size is very difficult to revert, reverse course. The U.S. does not change on a dime. Big countries do not change on a dime. Uh, and you have to somehow change the entire culture. You have to get everyone off their phones, off of watching what he says is the garbage people are watching. Um, and how are you going to do that? It's better to simply go where you're treated best and find a society where you feel more comfortable. Now, you don't have to go to some of the countries that we talk about. We uh, had a couple of people recently who said, I want to move to the UK. I want to move to Ireland. I think that while they're not perfect uh, and I'm going to pay some taxes and I may have some restrictions placed on me, uh, at least the people there seem moderately intelligent. And you know what? Every time I go with an American to London or to Frankfurt or something like that, they say, oh, my goodness, this is so much better than where." <laughs> Chicago or Los Angeles, you know, the people are, you know, nice. or, or, we'll, or I'll be with American friends of mine somewhere and we'll meet people who are from Europe and they're like, hey, I'm sure their country's not perfect either, but at least they can put a sentence together. Obviously, there are plenty of Americans who watch this channel, uh, who have created great businesses, who whatever, have become successful. There's obviously plenty of that in the U.S., but the overall culture is headed in the wrong direction. And if that is a problem for you, realize there are alternatives that are heading in the right direction. No place is perfect, but you can pick where that place is. Uh, you can go to that place and you can get away uh, from what it is that you may not like in the United States. You can go where you're treated best. Don't stop now. We've got well over a thousand more videos here on YouTube for you to watch and learn how to go where you're treated best. And if you want to work with Nomad Capitalist personally, go to nomadcapitalist.com slash apply. Learn about our unique tried and true process. Garnered over years of experience and learn how you can become our client.